It is extremely disheartening to see the sad state of affairs of football in India, a country with a long and noteworthy history in the sport. There was a time when India finished fourth at the Olympics, which was held in 1956 in Melbourne, and went on to win the gold medal at the 1951 and 1962 Asian Games. Clubs like Mohan Bagan, East Bengal, and Mahabadan Sporting enjoyed huge and loyal fan bases. Indian club football was a religion for fans. Gone are the golden days of yore. India has never been placed below 90 in the FIFA World Rankings. You go to any Indian city and ask a follower of their favourite football club, they will reply with a name from Premier League, Bundesliga. It is not their fault that they are supporting European clubs. After cricket started becoming popular after the 1983 World Cup win, football started waning and could not keep up with the pace at the international level. Now, there have been some stars that have carried the baton at the international level in recent decades such as Ayam Vijayan, Baicham Bhutia and Sunil Chetri, but this is not enough. Skill is not the issue. Indians are as skilled in football as anyone else in the world. But if football doesn't fill their stomachs, then why would youngsters choose this as a career? There can be a huge pool of players to choose from, but there isn't because most of them leave the sport to pursue a safe job. A total of 5 crore rupees was allocated to the All India Football Federation in 2022. And I do not mean to compare, but a single cricketer tied with the BCCI with an A-plus rating earns up to 7 crores per annum. Oh, and the budget for 2019 to 2020 was 30 crores, and this amount has trickled down by 85% in just 4 years. The reason cited was a dip in performance. Well, India has qualified for the 2023 AFC Asian Cup, the first time it has achieved this feat consecutively. Certainly not a dip. Slashing money and giving up on the team is definitely not going to help with the morale of the footballers. This is a time to rebuild and not fall deeper into the abyss. The Indian men's hockey team, with a past even more glorious than football, did not manage to qualify for the 2008 Olympics. 13 years later, however, they won an Olympic medal for India. If everyone had given up on them, this would not have been possible. ISL teams have a net worth in the range of 4 to 5 million dollars, while the top teams in European leagues have a net worth of 4 to 5 billion dollars. IPL teams have a net worth exceeding 1 billion dollars. It is not as if Indian football fans have disappeared. The recent Santosh Trophy final in Kerala witnessed a packed stadium with supporters. Nurture these areas a little bit more and we will reap rich rewards. Forget all these problems for a minute because if we don't have a national team, these won't matter. Why am I saying so? Because a FIFA ban looms over India. Yes, a ban from the worldwide governing body of the sport. You heard me right. Let's rewind a bit. It all started in 2017 when the last election of the Football Federation took place. A petition was sent to the Supreme Court to revamp its constitution. Cut to 2020, Prafil Patel, the long-standing president of AIFF, completed his three terms in 12 years in December, the maximum permitted to a National Sports Federation chief under the Sports Code. However, no elections were held and he continued with his position, citing a pending petition in the SC. The court appointed a three-man committee of administrators to take charge, and that's when the matter caught FIFA's eyes as it was seen as a violation due to a third-party intervention. Other Asian nations such as Kuwait and Indonesia have also been hit with bans in recent years because for what the governing body sees as government interference in the running of the federation. And thus, India was also threatened with an international ban. However, India is not just a market that can be banned in a day. And thus, FIFA along with the AFC decided to dispatch a delegation to the country. And after a set of meetings with Sports Minister Anurag Thakur, the Committee of Administrators, the former president of AIFF along with Prafil Patel who is a council member in FIFA, officials from AIFF and state associations along with representatives of the I-League, the committee has provided an ultimatum to India of 38 days. The All India Football Federation has to finalize the new constitution by July 31st. And the elections for the new president have to be conducted by September 15th in order to avoid the ban. The Continental and World Federation will externally monitor the situation. But if the ban is brought into effect, then all the activities that fall under the FIFA jurisdiction will come to a standstill. The domestic and international football matches will have to bear the burden of the system except for the I-League and ISL because they do not fall under FIFA's umbrella. 
With events such as the Under-17 Women's World Cup and the AFC Cup just around the corner, we as fans can only hope that the administration handles this time-sensitive matter with utmost care.